Hello, this is a training video on the Low Profile Series Vactron Vacuum Excavation Equipment. We're going to start at the beginning of the front of the trailer, work our way all the way around the unit and go over all the details and what's important on, while running this equipment. First of all, we want to talk about making sure the trailer is level when it is attached to the truck for towing. The panel hitch is adjustable, three stage adjustable panel hitch and you always want to adjust it to where whatever truck you're pulling it with the trailer is level. This it ensures that you have level weight distribution on both axles for braking as well as load distribution, weight distribution. Always make sure that you're using the proper panel hitch on the vehicle with a safety mechanism for locking the panel hitch down and also your chains, make sure both of your chains are attached your light as well as your safety breakaway cable for your brakes. Right here is a brake battery and monitor that you can push the test button and as long as you get a green light indicator you have good battery power to lock the brakes down or to um, uh, use the brakes while trailering the unit. If you have a yellow or a red, the yellow of course means it's low, the red means it's dead by hooking it to the truck, it will charge the battery. So you can hook it up, let it charge for an hour or so, and then you're safe to go down the road with the brakes. The jack stand, just very simple, a spring-loaded foot pedal. You put it down to the lowest position you can, and then the right rotation will put it down, the left rotation will bring it up. All your controls are here on the control panel. Very easy uh, and accessible. You have your fuel gauge, your volt meter, your hours, hour indicator, your oil pressure, your water temperature, both for the engine, of course. Your light controls, when you pull out one time, your strobe light comes on. When you pull out both uh, notches, your strobe and your work lights at the rear of the machine. This is your throttle control. It's preset at a low throttle setting and preset at the high throttle setting. So of course low when you're starting and stopping the engine and then high throttle when you're doing your excavator. Water pump on and off. The water, This switch controls an electric clutch on the water pump that uh, turns the pump on and off. That electric clutch is also attached to a sensor in the water tanks so that we'll turn the pump off if you run out of water to keep from damaging your, your pump. Of course your ignition, these resettable fuses, the first one is for your throttle, the second one is for your lights, and the third one is for your water pump. Inside this panel, of course your Yanmar diesel engine, all of your service points are accessible from this side of the unit. You can check your oil, you can change the oil with a quick release for the oil flow. You've got your oil filter, your fuel filter, your water fuel separator, your air fil filter. You also have the fill point for your oil as well as access to your radiator. And for filling that there's an access on the top of the engine stand to fill the radiator. You also have an antifreeze bypass switch on the inside here. This is a momentary switch. This allows you at the end of the day, if you need to winterize the machine uh, and you're out of water, this allows you to override the sensor that shuts the water pump off in the event of being out of water. But if you want to antifreeze it, you can just push, it, push this button up, hold it. It will circulate with the pump, pulling the antifreeze through the system, and then you release it. One other thing while we're inside here, all of your parts and uh, belts, oils and that sort of thing are on this sticker inside the engine stand. A quick reference as to what needs to be done, when it needs to be changed, the fluids and what to use as well as the uh, vacuum belts and the water pump belts. All that information right inside here with the unit number. Okay, now we're going to talk about the filter housing. 
Also within the filter housing is your silencer that runs up through the center of the cyclone area. This is the silencer for the air flow coming away from the blower, exhausting the air out here. That makes the machine very quiet, but also you have a rain cap on top that keeps water from getting inside but allows the air to escape. You have a sight glass here because this whole area around the silencer is your cyclone. So as it's capturing the larger particulates, you can see what is being accumulated within the cyclone through your sight glass here. You can also uh, change your vacuum to, from here to vacuum for, to neutral and then to reverse pressure to offload liquid materials from the tank, to purge the vacuum hose, but also to purge your filtration system under pressure. When you put it under vacuum, of course you're pulling vacuum under the tank and you're working. You're sucking in through the vacuum hose and filling the debris tank. All your air, dirty air, out of the tank is coming through this filter housing, passing through that, getting cleaned down to a half a micron, and then passing back through the vacuum pump. While this is doing that, it's collecting particulates, collecting dirty material, and if you put this under pressure, shut the valve at the rear of the tank so that you're building pressure within the system, you have a lever here that controls a four inch valve at the bottom of the cyclone and when you open it, it purges that system. So any of your loose materials that's collected in the cyclone will push out the bottom there as well as purge the filter and push those particulars out as well. This should be done at the end of each day. If you do that, you will minimize the amount of times you have to pull your filters out and clean them. And then just close it back up and you're ready to go back to work. We'll talk about the filtration system on the other side of the machine because it'll be easier to access and see from that side. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the antifreeze system. Uh, the antifreeze system is very easy to use. You have a Siamese valve here that controls whether you're pulling water out of the, your water tanks, whether you turn it off also, and pull water or antifreeze out of the antifreeze tank. So right now it's indicating up, which is off, to back towards the rear of the machine, it's pointing to the water, it's pulling water out of the water tanks. So to antifreeze it, you simply turn it to antifreeze. And so when I turn the pump on, I'm gonna push antifreeze through the pump system, all the way through the lines, all the way back and out the water hose. So I'll do that now. You just turn the machine on idle, you don't have to rev it up. Just turn that pump on until I saw the antifreeze come out the end of the hose. Now that has antifreeze the entire system except for the unloader valve that is here on the side of the hose reel and this line that feeds it back into the water tank when you are bypassing. In order, if you don't antifreeze this line, it's not a pressure line, but if you don't antifreeze it, it can accumulate water in the bottom of the hose and if it freezes, it can split the hose and mess up your day at work. So the easiest way to do that, you got a lock on your hose reel, unlock it, bring this around, and hook it to one of your water wands. By hooking it to the water wand, when I don't trigger it, it bypasses the system back through the water tank, and then that will obviously pull antifreeze through that line. So I'll start the machine up, I'll turn it on for about two seconds on the water pump, and that will antifreeze that line. Now I've got red in this line, means it's indicated from the red from the antifreeze. So that's all there is to antifreeze in the system. It's antifreeze all the way through this filter 
all the way through into the pump, all the lines back to the hose reel and including the return line that goes back into the tank. You don't want to leave that hook like that and leave your pump on, otherwise it's going to drain all your antifreeze out and put it right into your water tanks and it's not going to be enough to keep them from freezing. In order to keep the water tanks from freezing, you use your valve here, which is your main drain at the lowest point. You open this all the way up, let it drain out. Also, open these valves here that are there for cleaning your hands and whatnot. It will help the air escape out of the system and drain the tanks completely. Once you're done, you can squeeze the nozzle, release the pressure, always very important. And put your hose back. Always be sure to lock this hose reel. It keeps it from allowing the hose to unravel while you're going down the, down the road. Okay, from the rear of the unit, you get a better view of the hose reel. You have an indicator, PSI indicator gauge here on the back that shows you the PSI that you're running the machine at or running the water uh, system at. When you disengage the handle, it will always read 4,000 PSI because that's what the pump is capable of. So what you have to do is squeeze the nozzle on the rotary one and get your true indication of what you want. So if you want to set it at 3,000 PSI, you'll turn this down by going to the uh, left, sorry, go to the right to turn it up, left to turn it down, and you squeeze the nozzle until you get to 3,000 PSI. Remember, when you release the nozzle, it's always going to indicate 4,000 PSI. You can also see the pink color in this return line. That's because that's antifreeze now. Very important to antifreeze that hose. This is your unloader valve. This is what, when you release the nozzle, that's what it's allowing the water to circulate back into the pump so you don't, or back into the water tank so you don't over pressurize the pump or the system. Now we're going to talk about the procedure for opening and closing the rear hydraulic door and dumping the debris tank. These are your controls for that. They're in a safe position away from the rear door so that you don't have a chance of getting pinched inside the between the door and the debris tank. So you have a lock and an unlock. You have an open and a close, of course both of those for the door. And then you have an up and a down for the debris tank. So in order to open the door, you would hit the unlock until the door becomes in the unlock position. Then you can open the door by pushing this button and then you can raise the debris tank in the up position and dump the debris out. In order to bring it down and to lock everything up, you go opposite. You lower the tank down. You never raise or lower the door unless the tank is in the down position. So you bring the tank in the, to the down position, do your clean out, rinse out, whatever you need to do. Always clean inside the tank good. Clean your shutoff ball. Uh, float ball inside there as well as your gearing for locking the door which I'll show you here shortly. So once your tank is down, you close your door. Hold that down so the door is closed and then you hit the lock button and you hold that down until the door is completely locked. You will not overstress any one of these hydraulics by holding the button too long. Just hold it a few seconds longer than it takes to fully lock the door or close the door or put the tank in the down position. So that's how you open, unlock and open the door and also raise and lower the debris tank. Now I'll show you how that looks. The engine does not have to be running for the hydraulics to work but the key does have to be in the on position. However, it's not a bad idea to have the engine running at idle when you're raising and lowering the tank to help preserve your battery. So what I'll do is unlock the door see it jump like that, when you see it jump like that, you know it's fully unlocked. And then you open the door, and then you raise your tank up. When the debris is done dumping out, you can lower your tank, now 
Now before I shut the door, I'll point out a few things. We have a polymer liner on the bottom half of the tank that helps the material slide out. That requires no maintenance other than keeping it clean, just as you do the inside of the tank. You also have a float ball inside the tank that shuts the vacuum off when the debris tank is full. That needs to be rinsed off as well to keep that ball free from muck and that sort of thing, keeping it from getting clogged up. Keep that clean, the, tank will, uh, the machine will shut down the vacuum whenever the tank is full. You also want to clean your rubber seal here on the rear door. Keep that free from debris as well as your acne shaft that actually screws the door and locks it shut. So once you have all that good and clean, including your sight glass so that you can use that on a regular basis, if it's dirty, you can't tell the level. So you clean that off as well. Once all that is clean, then you're free to shut the door and lock it. You simply come up here, get closed, and then lock. Then turn your key off or shut your engine down. Okay, let's talk about what's on the back door. These are latches designed to hold your hose in place. These all flip back, lock in place. Bottom ones do the same, then you can take your hose off, utilize it. When you put it back on, bring these back into closed position, lock them down. And you're ready to go down the road safe and secure no way that hose is getting out of there this is your four inch intake for your vacuum hose this is the lever to open and close this very important to have this with a reverse pressure machine when I when you put this machine in reverse pressure in other words you're pushing air into this tank building up pressure you shut this valve off if you have a clog in your hose lay your hose out flat let it build up to full pressure and then open the valve quickly and it'll purge that hose out. It's not a lot of pressure, it's all about volume. A lot of air inside that tank releasing through that hose quickly. It's not going to blow a rock out the end and hit a car, but it will be enough to dislodge debris most of the time and get your hose clear. So you can keep that shut. You also want to keep that shut going down the road if you have a full load of liquid materials in here just from the sloshing around, even though this is at the very top of the tank, once it goes inside, you can get debris that will loosen. Come down this and leak out if you don't have this shut. If you want to dis unload liquid materials out of the tank without opening the door, this is your six inch discharge. It's at the lowest point of the tank, of course. You can take the cap off, open the valve as you're standing clear, and let the material either drain out with gravity into a pit or you can put it under reverse pressure and open this to just the right point and it will keep it pressurized and you can literally hook a hose to this and push it into another tanker if you like. You also have two safety cones that come standard with each Vactron unit. Make sure that you keep these on the trailer at all times and utilize them in traffic areas for, for your safety. DOT lighting on the back of each unit is standard as well DOT striping. This is your hydraulic motor that locks the, and unlocks the door. This is a very strong hydraulic motor set at just the right pressures for locking the door as well as unlocking the door. In the event that this fails or your hydraulics fail, you can remove four nuts. This motor will separate from the shaft once you've done that and then it will allow you to open the door. Always remember to get as much material, if it's liquids especially, out of the tank through this six inch discharge before you do this. If you got solids in there, it's not a live load. But when you have liquid materials and you take these off, it allows that door to release. So always keep in mind you want the tank empty of liquid materials through the six inch discharge before to, uh, releasing this motor. At Vectron, we use Dexter Axle and Goodyear tires, best you can get. However, you do need to grease your axles and your buddy bearings here. Behind this rubber grommet is your buddy bearing. All four sides, both sides, all four tires 
need to be greased on a regular basis, depending on your road travel as to how much you do that. But that's your access to your buddy bearings to grease those. Be sure that they get greased on a regular basis. Okay, now I want to go over the procedure for cleaning the filter, pulling the filter out of the housing. You will need a wrench or a pair of channel locks to do so. Sometimes it's best to bring the machine under vacuum to help release this, the tension on this wing nut. So you'll loosen this up first. Remember, this washer will not come free from the wing nut, but this rubber washer will. This is very important because that gives you your seal right here. So it's very important not to lose that rubber washer. So once that's off, we remove the door, set it to the side, and then you have the nut here. This is where you'll need your channel locks or a wrench to get this loosened up. Once it's loose, bring it all the way out. So you have a lock washer and a standard washer, very important. Also, do not lose those. This plate comes off, and then you have full access to your filter. This filter is very important. This filter is the life of your machine because it's what protects your blower. This filter filters dirty air down to a half a micron, which is basically what I'm breathing now. It's very important to keep this filter in the machine and also keep it clean. Depending on your application, uh, every 30 days to every 60 days. Depending on your application and how many times you purge the filtration system. If you do that on a regular basis, you won't have to pull the filter out as, as often. Uh, the filter has an aluminum screen on the inside, the full length of the filter, which will keep it from collapsing. Once this filter is out, then you do not want to use high pressure air. The low pressure water one that we spoke about earlier, put it on the fan, clean it off, or with low pressure air, or medium pressure air, you can clean it out as well. Let it dry, then it's ready to go back into the machine. Doesn't matter which way it goes in, same on both sides. Right in behind the filter is your full way valve. That's, you can also, from this side of the machine, change it from pressure to vacuum on, this, on the Vactron. That full way valve is built into this housing assembly. You do have three grease fittings right here. You want to grease those once a week. And I'll show you the rest of the grease fittings as we continue around. You also have a grease fitting here for this mechanism. Keep that grease once a week as well. Put your filter back in, plate, washer, lock washer, very important once you get to here, reach up underneath, Center the filter, center this plate. Make sure it's sitting where it needs to be sitting, where it's centered in the circle. And once you've hand tightened it, take your channel locks or your wrench and snug it down. Don't have to over tighten it, but you want to make sure you get it good and snug. Then lid back on. Now this is important as well. This little area right here goes inside this hole. So you will have to raise this up to make sure it goes in. Rubber washer first. Then your wing nut. Once you get there, lift this up a little bit. Make sure that goes inside there.
once you've snugged it down, turn your machine on, just at idle, put it under vacuum, close the valve in the back, let it build up to full vacuum, and give it one more turn. That makes sure you get a good seal around here. There is a seal on this uh, cylinder as well that you want to make sure stays in good working condition so that you do get a good seal here. If you don't get a good seal, you'll lose vacuum and you'll lose pressure, and you don't want that. So put it under vacuum, give it one more complete turn, and you're ready to go. On your street side access panel, you have easy access to your battery, easy access to your water pump, and your vacuum pump, as well as your belt. Your vacuum pump has a belt tensioner. Be sure to keep that at the right tension. Refer to your owner's manual for all your belt tensions and how to uh, tighten the belts. Uh, also, you have your sight glass for your water pump and your vacuum pump here. Keep your levels where they need to be. Again, your owner's manual, what fluids to use. Check them daily. Easy access to check these things. And, um, and then on the front side of the vacuum pump, you have two grease fittings here. You want to grease those according to the owner's manual as well. So you want to make sure you keep your oil bath changed in the uh, vacuum pump as well as your grease fittings on the front side and then your fluid levels on your water pump as well. All accessible from this side of the machine and as you can see you have a lot of area and good easy access to all your components. We also now put the pop-off valve for the vacuum pump inside the engine stand makes it much quieter. What this does is when your vacuum pump reaches that 15 inches of mercury that it's capable of, this opens up to allow just enough air in to maintain that. Keeps your vacuum pump from overheating and also makes it maintain the correct amount of vacuum that the pump was designed to create. Okay, that just about does it. You do have an owner's manual on the machine. Two owner's manuals come with each machine. And you can look in here for all of your grease fitting locations and how often to grease those, uh, your oil levels, and your how to antifreeze the system and all the things that we've gone over are all inside the owner's manual. Be sure to read this cover to cover and be familiar with the machine before you operate it, as well as the safety booklet that comes with each Vactron. Be sure you read that so you don't get hurt out on the in the field. Thank you.